Ray, and welcome to another informal interview for Tatec Global 2022. So I'm really pleased to be able to introduce David Horton. He's one of the open source heroes in the programmable communications industry. He's the founder of uh, Dretchio and Jambones. So I'm going to stop talking. Dave, over to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, this first of all, this is a, a real background. I'm doing the work remote thing that all the young kids have popularized. And uh, right now I'm in Switzerland, in Wengen, Switzerland. So that's Jungfrau behind me. Uh, and it's it's fantastic. And this is, of course, one of the benefits of uh, open source, working in the open source industry, which I'll maybe talk about a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm the fellow behind Jim Bones. Jim Bones is an open source CPaaS designed for service providers, communication service providers that, you know, till now have had the option of using Twilio, Rescom, or any of those commercial products. But they want a platform in some cases where they can drive their own innovation to it, be a little bit closer to it, and really push it forward. That's what Jim Bones is all about. I'm also the creator of Tractio, which is an open source SIP application server. And I've been in the open source world of communications for about 10 years. A um, little bit about me. I guess I'll start with um, hobbies, fun facts, talk about how I got into tech, and then maybe specifically how I got into open source, which is probably a more interesting kind of story. Um, hobbies, you know, my when I got out of college, my focus wasn't career. Actually, I was playing rugby. I loved rugby, which is a surprise. There's not a lot of rugby in the U.S. compared to some of the other countries, but that was my thing. I was kind of an itinerant rugby player trying to make a living on the side. Um, and I got the chance eventually to play for the U.S. team and to play in the first World Cup in 1987 in Australia. So there's a fun fact there. Um, really enjoyed it. I say this not to brag, because if you can play at the highest level of something in your country and yet be mediocre, that was probably me. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun, still love it and uh, love to watch it today. And that led me to uh, uh, a um, fur kind of a self-enforced furlough that I took to Wales several years ago when I was getting into open source because it's such a great rugby company and I'd visited our country and had visited there when I was younger. And that's actually where I created Dractio and from that then came Jambones. But, you know, as a youngster, eventually I had to get serious. I had to find a career and uh, I hadn't studied computer science in school, I, but I was very interested in it. So I was sort of self-taught and, you know, in those days it was a little bit Harder. You'd, you'd read books, you'd post questions on bullet boards and wait weeks for answers, but mainly just have to figure out a lot of stuff yourself. It was a great, great kind of experience. And I got into telecom because I got a job with uh, Macaw Cellular, who then very quickly became AT&T Wireless. Um, and my first job subsequent to that was with a startup company. And that were some, you know, the enjoyment really kicked in. I loved just, uh, you know, just the fact that it was so new, so young, so vibrant, trying things out, no levels of corporate bureaucracy, writing code today, tomorrow it's in a customer's hands for better or worse. <laughs> and uh, around that time, SIP was becoming a thing. And the company that I was in got acquired. So I started my own company in 2000. Uh, Pactolis communication software, and that was a great experience as well. Really loved it. We developed and sold software to telecom carriers who were trying to reorient their networks. So they were going from circuit switch to packet switch. They knew they had to do it, didn't really know how. Um, so they were willing to let people who didn't know much more than them, startup companies like my own, try to figure it out. And we did. And I got to crawl through a bunch of networks like Deutsche Telekom, Global Crossing, figure out how to make things work, figure out how to scale it. That was all well and good. That kind of came to an end, rather crashing end around 2008, the uh, financial collapse, the more recent financial collapse. Some of, some of us are old enough to remember. That was a really interesting experience for me as well um, in that I ended up having some challenges <laughs> with uh, investors and a difference of views of, of how things should go. And so I, I came out of that um, with a feeling that I didn't want to raise money like that again. And I didn't want to deal with those. I didn't want to have the kinds of conversations that I was having with people that had the kind of incentives that were at cross purposes to mind. And so this led me to, to the open source world to start building stuff on my own. And I've really loved it. You know, to me, the open source world, the experience is a lot like uh, uh, the bar scene in Star Wars 
all of these bandits from remote areas and projects coming in doing what the hell they want and, and you know you're learning from each other but it's a little you know it's uh it's a little out of control it's on the edge of control and i kind of love that that spirit of it you know it's challenging at the beginning to write code in the open i mean i've been writing code for 20 years but still it was like geez do i really want people to see how crappy my code is um but you know put it out there and, and people help you improve it uh so I, for the last 10 years i've been doing that the first thing i built was an open source version of a sip application server that i built you know on a, on a commercial basis i felt like it was needed i felt there was a spot for it kind of somewhere in between free switch asterisk and camellio and that was dractio and it was intended to let web developers have a more easy entree into building telecom applications a couple of years ago i started and during this time i was uh, consulting uh, and still am re running a sort of VoIP consultancy. Uh, a couple of years ago, I ran into a stream of prospects and then customers who wanted off ramps from the C commercial CPAS they were using, whether it be Twilio, Rescom, Plevo, whatnot. Um, and there were a variety of reasons, but in a lot of cases, they were service providers. In a lot of cases, they wanted more control over the intellectual property. They wanted not to be sitting waiting for features. They wanted to be able to drive them. In a lot of cases, they wanted their brand to come before that of the CPAS. They didn't want to be overshadowed. Um, all those things that make a hell of a lot of sense if you're actually in that business. And so I looked at the first couple of times, I built them sort of a one-off purpose-built exit ramp, do just whatever the little thing they were doing. I did that about three times and I realized this is not that hard. I, and I realized I've sort of got all the skills necessary to build the software, make sure it scales, because I just spent 15 years doing that. Yeah. So I said, well, I should build the whole, the whole thing in an open source framework. Went ahead and did that. That's Jim Bones. And Jim Bones has sort of um, found an audience with two groups of folks. One is my original intent, which was service providers. Uh, the second is more recently, and wasn't my original intent, um, contact center, AI. There's a lot of AI providers out there that want a voice pipe want to somehow connect a voice pipe to their stuff. The Jambones is really good for that. Um, and actually that's during TADAC, we'll get to, to showcase that. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of, of my background and where I came from and what I'm doing now. Excellent. No, that is an amazing issue. I, I didn't know about the rugby. So uh, <laughs> that's not in LinkedIn, is it? No. No. Ah, <laughs> you included in LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So what are you hoping to see from some of the hacks uh, from Tad Hack this year? So I, I think I'm going to partner with one of my um, uh, customers who is in the contact center business, Cognigy. Cognigy yeah. AI is a great German company that has some really awesome contact center AI and a low code environment where you can, you can, you can build flows. Yeah. So we're going to couple that with Jambone so you can do voice flows into Cognigy. Um, you'll have a free sign up um, for both. And so I'm kind of just interested to see what people um, use, what, you know, what they make, obviously, maybe what they wanted to make, but have ideas that I should put into the product to let them build as well. And, you know, how they use the AI kind of functionality. Oh, that's excellent. I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, people create. I think this is, Using their low-code platform makes Jambones so much more accessible to many other de uh, developers. And, and it's definitely a theme. So, for example, Radisys, one of the other sponsors, they have a very simple tool. So we're seeing it pop up time and time again and making it as easy as possible for as many people to come in and use your platform to solve problems. So cool. That's really excellent, Dave. Again, I think you win on the best background, real live background. <laughs> well done, Dave. And again, thank you for your time. Thanks, Al.